Welcome back guys, today we'll be looking at price strategies. Price strategies just refer to any strategy that influences the amount of money a business charges for the purchase of its products. So, some general strategies include cost-based pricing, which considers the total cost to the business of manufacturing or providing a good or service to the consumer and then adds an additional amount. For example, it costs me 5 cents to produce a chocolate bar, but I might sell it for $2 because I want a $1.95% profit on each bar. Secondly, competition-based pricing involves looking at the price set by a competitor, then setting a price below it. If both my shop and my competitor's shop sell the same brand and same size of chocolate bar for $2 each, then I might decide to use competition pricing and sell mine at $1.90 to get that competitive edge on my competitor. Thirdly, price points where a business sets different prices for similar products that are differentiated by their features. Imagine a row of iPods in a store. They look identical, for example, they have the same shape and colour, but they have different prices because one has 8GB of memory, one has 16GB of memory, and one has 32GB of memory. That's price points. Fourthly, psychological pricing, which is used to take advantage of the consumer's response. For example, if I'm selling my motorbike to generate some cash so I can go travelling, I know I need to sell a bike for around $6,000, but if I price it at $5,999, I can get that psychological edge on the consumer because it appears cheaper, when really I'm charging an almost identical price. Finally, price and quality interaction is just based on how high the quality of the product is. As a rule of thumb, the higher the quality of the products, the higher the price. Alright, now let's look at some strategies to generate fast sales. Firstly, penetration pricing, which involves setting prices at the lowest possible price to gain an immediate group of customers. It's also used to penetrate a market and gain market share rapidly. For example, let's say I just launched a new brand of sports shoes, so to generate some sales, get my name out there and rapidly increase market share, I'll set my prices as low as possible. Secondly, loss leader, which involves setting a price that generates minimal profit or even a loss to encourage consumers to purchase goods from the business. Businesses will generally only stock a few items at this price to entice consumers into a store. Consumers will then buy more expensive products in the future. Now, let's look at strategies that generate the greatest return. Market skimming, which is used by a business when it wants to recover the high costs involved in establishing a product and releasing it onto a marketplace. It does this by setting a really high price. If I launch the new and exclusive brand of watches, I could skim the price of them to make them look and feel really luxurious. Secondly, prestige pricing, which is used for products that consumers regard as prestigious and therefore they are willing to pay higher prices for. For example, since 1960, the use of prestige pricing by BMW has ensured strong demand and growing confidence in the brand. BMW now has a 27.8% share of the European car market in Australia. Alright, now let's have a look at a selection of past paper questions. Each of these questions examines a type of pricing strategy. I also think that some of them do it in quite interesting and intuitive ways, so they'll be great for cementing our understanding of the content. We'll start with HSE 2003 question 8, which reads, Clean Cut Mowers has invented and is marketing a silent lawnmower. There is no other mower like it on the market. Vanessa, the marketing director, has decided to charge the maximum price possible for this mower. What type of pricing strategy is Vanessa using? Well, by charging the maximum possible price for a new and intuitive product, the lawnmower in this case, and one that's silent, Vanessa is skimming the product, meaning setting the highest possible price. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Let's move on to HSE 2008 question 10. There's quite a lot of content to take in here, so let's break it down. The question reads, the marketing manager of product A wishes to move the product from its current position at A to A1. Which of the following strategies could the business use to achieve the repositioning to A1? The diagram given to us has personalised service and non-personalised service on one side, and perceived low quality and perceived high quality on the other side, so it's a scale of 0 to 10 pretty much on each, so the quality and the service. By moving the product from A to A1, personalised service or non-personalised service is not increasing or decreasing at all, so we can rule those two out. That might sound a little confusing, but when moving from A to A1, the arrow is horizontal, meaning it only affects the scale for perceived low quality or perceived high quality. 
if the arrow was moving vertically up or vertically down, then it would influence personalized or non-personalized service, but in this case, it's not. Therefore, if the marketing manager just wants to have their product perceived as high quality, then the only way to do this is to jack the price up. Option C, penetrating pricing, and option D, loss leader, are all about reducing price, so that just leaves us with option A and B. It can't be option A though, because price skimming is only for new and innovative products, and the stimulus here mentions nothing about being new or innovative. Therefore, the answer is B, increasing price. I actually think this is one of the best multiple choice questions I've seen asked in a business exam, so I'm glad we went through it. Great work, guys. In our next video, we'll be going through promotion strategies. Until then, do what I always say and rinse and repeat the material, and ask your teachers or friends if there's anything you're unsure about, or drop a comment in the section below.